Is it on? Yeah. Hello and welcome to another episode of Jared Leno. I'm your host, Jared Leno. Uh, tonight we have a special guest uh, who recently published Ancient India, archaeologist uh, Josh Stamos. Everyone gets a free copy. Uh, here's Josh Stamos now. Yeah. Is that like your favorite song or something? Yeah. I thought it'd be like pretty funny if you change your name to John. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about ancient India. Well. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, beginning? Alright. It all started around 500 BC when the first inhabitants of India um, recorded traditions of different religions. This, in time, became known as Vedic literature, which is the most ancient, sacred writings of Hinduism. It's, uh, cool, I guess. I don't know. Um, when we get back, Josh will be here to talk more about ancient India. Hello, and welcome back to the Jerry Leno Show. Josh Damos here. Um, so tell me a little bit about the class systems. Well, each level of classification was made by the god Prish. He was a primal man. Each body part had some significance to where that group was classified. Priests being the most dominant, were located on the head. He destroyed himself in order to create human society. Um, take a peek at this short clip. clip. I am Brahim, part of the highest class. Only priests and chiefs are part of this group. The word Brahmin comes from Brahma, which means creator of the world. I am Hecastria. Part of the second class. This class is the warriors. We are respected because we serve the king. During times of war, we fight. During times of peace, we govern. I am a Vaisha, part of the third class. We are the businessmen. We make all of our money off of the trade and we are generally treated well. I am a shrewd, the lowest class. Some of us are called the untouchables. We do all the dirty work here in India. We're the laborers. So Josh, tell us a little bit about religion. Well, the most dominant religion is called Hinduism. It's one of the oldest religions that originated from northern India, along with nudism, the study of going without clothes, and Jainism, the practice of liberating the soul through ascetism, um, where exactly were these practiced? They were practiced in temples, chaitas, viras, and stupras. So, John, uh, how were women uh, treated in the ancient India? Who's the archaeologist here? You. Me, I am. Who has a book here? Me, okay? Mm. Back to, alright, women, from the start, you know, they could own property, they could choose who they wanted to marry, but as soon as Hinduism developed in India around 500 BC, women had to obey their husbands, they had to walk behind them, and they could not own property or choose who they are going to marry. So, now that you're uh, done with that, um, how are, uh, women raised to be wives and mothers. Well, there's an ancient writing called the Sri Dharma Padate of Trambakalajan Ka. Okay. It was passed down between generations. It's a guide to the religious status and duties of a woman. Um, I think you uh, forgot to mention earlier that rock structures on temples are related to various religious uh, committees. Did I? Uh, yeah, it's your book, right? I also forgot to add that 
During the 3rd century BC, Buddhists and Jain monks used the temples for confession and worship. Sorry. It's okay. <coughs> so, um, what's a typical day like for uh, children and women back in ancient India? Well, during the day, children go to school and they're taught by a guru. Um, most of the lessons are taught orally. If not, they write on, they would write on bark and leaves. Now, the kids of chiefs and priests and some of the less fortunate people are all mixed in together. Uh, no matter what social class you are, you still see the same guru. Um, is it weird that they're all combined? Well, I mean, no. Like, does, do they get treated differently or? No, they get treated the same. They learn the same subjects, sing the same songs, do the same dances, play with the same toys. What kind of toys do they, they play with? Um, simple toys. I mean, wooden ones. They weren't really uh, intricate. Um, what's the family life like? Well, families are obviously very close back then. The eldest male is the head of the household, but the women are still treated with respect. Marriage was a sacred bond between two people. Families in their free time would sing and dance for fun. Uh, what else did they do in their free time? They went to the temples to pray. <laughs> yeah? Uh-huh. What did ancient uh, Indian people contribute to? Well, there was a lot of art found that was cut out of the rocks, and some of them actually date past 300 BC um, and tied back to religious views. Also, they had discoveries in mathematics, astronomy, and they're even one of the first people to ever use the sweetener in cooking. Yeah, how'd they do that? They used ground up sugar cane. So they ground it up until it turned into brown powder. Now it knows brown sugar. The idea I could have never guessed. I'm not done! The idea of brown sugar was kept secret until 500 BC. It's one of the most famous discoveries. Mm, wow, that's just the greatest story I've ever heard. Um, why'd you even write this book anyways? Yeah, alright. Done with this interview. So, uh... Did I forget to add? That there... Economy was based off major fishing ports. Also, agriculture, working the cane fields. Goodbye. Thanks for watching another episode of Jared Leno. Um, I wish our guests would have been a little more cooperative, but that's how Canadians are. See you later.